No, okay, so um, dealing with these quads today, I crashed one last night, and, uh, and the person, when he saw how quickly he could move that, how much money he could, killed that yeah. person. So that stepped yeah. him up one ladder, you know, um, one rung on that ladder towards the top of the ladder, which is where he had to go. Now what helped him is he had no remorse, he had no compunction, he had no guilt feelings uh, whatsoever about killing people. It was just done this. So when you've got that type of that psyche and that mentality, and I'm doing some I think that had a lot to do. And, and then as you get more powerful and more wealthy, you think you're important now. You know, and that's where he decided, hey, okay, now I want to move into Congress. Now I want to be president. Now I want this. Yeah. Now I want that. The only, the only reason I ask is because sometimes you see, you know, you look at Frank Lucas, gonna... Frank Lucas from American Gangster. Right. 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 He had his boss that was putting a lot of inspiration into him. He had somebody to watch. Who was Pablo's example? Like, who was Pablo following to say, I'm following this guy's footsteps. Was there anybody? Yeah. Uh, in the history of the cartel, I mean, you had Jose Gonzalo Rodriguez Gacha, who was more powerful than Pablo Escobar, who was richer. Because Gacha had taken over the emerald business. There's a famous massacre in Colombia, everybody knows about it, where he killed off a competition, Gilberto Molina. So he took over that. And how Gacha came up with the concept of the cocaine labs in Colombia? So after Gacha gets killed, Pablo takes over that organization. But my question has always been, how does Pablo rise to that CEO when you're mm -hmm. dealing with the most major traffickers in Colombia, right? I mean, you got the most mm -hmm. ruthless, you got the biggest, baddest traffickers. How do you become boss? Is that still a question? Is it still a question until today for you or no? Yes, has that yes been answered? Because, no, I mean, that has always been my question. How did he rise? Right. So you Where you have other major traffickers all listening to Pablo Escobar. See, that's what I'm, that's what wow. I'm wondering. Because I mean, I just, if you look at the Cali brothers, you know they were just driven by money. They were business guys. So to them, it was a different story, right? And, and sometimes, sometimes for people, it's just money famous all it is. Very few people have that big of an aspiration like a Pablo does. It has to be something deeper. By the way, what happens if Pablo doesn't have the aspirations of running for office? Does his legacy continue? Or would it eventually still stop? Let's just say Pablo says, you know what? I don't want to run for office. I want to be a low-key guy. Mm -hmm. I just want to take these 15 facilities that I have that were producing cocaine, a ton of cocaine a day. Let's make it 30. Let's make it 40. Let's make it 50. Maybe let's go to other countries. Let's make it in different places. How much bigger would he have gotten if he had zero aspirations of being a political leader? I think he would never have been capable of doing what you're suggesting. He says, let me be low-key. Because that, that ego he had, that personality, when you study him, when you listen. There inside his custom-built prison, he had a, a, he had a Salvador Dali original, probably worth a couple million dollars hanging <laughs> on the wall. There's a famous artist in Colombia, Fernando Botero, who's extremely well-known. He has a Botero original hanging on the wall for about $1.5 million. And this was in 1991, 1992. Right, right. The sequence before that charisma he had, that is very accurate. He'd go down and he would recruit his own sicarios. A lot of people do not know that. Yeah, there was a famous church. He would church. convert, right? He would convert he would, a lot of people. Yeah, he would he convert a famous Catholic church, and then one of the poorest neighbor poor churches. And he would have meetings, and he would come in. And all these young thugs, 14, 15 year old, they'd hug him, you know, he'd kiss him, give him money. And that was the allegiance, you know, that was, you know, you're the biggest trafficker and you're going down yourself. That's interesting. What I you're mean, saying. that just shows that personal, what you're talking about, yeah. that ego, that, that and, and personality. And here's the scenario. So he goes into this neighborhood where people are literally living on the edge of a trash dump. That's where their food comes from. That's where their clothes come from. Their yeah. cardboard and pieces of wood that they create mm -hmm. a little living shelter. Mm -hmm. He comes in and he, he builds low-cost housing and lets people live there for free. He provides them with food. He yeah. builds medical clinics, soccer fields. He gives them money. He gives them food. So think about it. Now, if your mom, if you come from a situation like that, now all of a sudden your mom's got a roof over her head. She's got a, a lock on her door. Yep. So you get a little bit of security. you got running water. You've got electricity. What are you going to think about the guy? But, I mean, this isn't anything new, right? If you want to get the vote, go get all the poor people and give them free food, give them free right. place to live, sure. and you're going to get their votes. And so right. here's the point. That's not a Robin Hood, which kind of, that's the persona everybody seems to want to portray yeah. now. He's, he, he wasn't a Robin Hood for these people. He manipulated those people because when he needed his new Sicarios, yeah. where did he go back to? There is a part of it where this whole Robin Hood theory came about because I think when Pablo died, 25,000 people showed up and they just wanted to touch his oh, face. They, they wanted to 
He was like glorified. They passed both away. popping out of the morgue. They're parading him the uh, on the streets. Does that make you uh, upset when you see that? Like, do you do this? Because it, it, it doesn't, you know, because I mean, it. This is history. It happened. It does it now. Well, or I mean, it, it doesn't. No, no, no. At that time, no, at that emotionally, time. you're yeah, so emotionally. Invested. We lost a lot of friends that were killed by Pablo Escobar. You know, and the innocent people. I I hated Pablo Escobar, but people love him. You know what? It's it's a way of life. Colombia is a safe country. It's a it's a beautiful place. Uh, beautiful Medellin, people, it's beautiful nice, people. Yeah. And you know what? We got to say, ninety nine point nine percent of Colombians are great, innocent, hard working people. It's that little one percent of the traffickers that ruin it. You know, uh, but still, many, still today's a lot of it yeah. still today or now. Yep. And, and you still. know what? We don't tell too many people, but we you know visit Medellin. The only thing you cannot do in Medellin. Do not badmouth Pablo Escobar in the day. Till today. He still has a lot of loyal followers. Till today. Till today. Wow. So the legend people still, still love him. So I've seen you say this, that what we saw in Narcos, the jail was nice. But you were saying the jail was... So what was this jail like that he chose to build? What was it like? It was, it was very much like a country club. So Pablo, what Pablo calls a jail cell is a two-room suite. The bathroom has a jacuzzi tub, walk-in closet a safe hidden behind the drawers in his walk-in closet. On the back side, we hang your long clothes. There was a wall, there was a collective back there, a hidden space. And so you push the button and the back wall pops open. There's a place to jump in there and hide. In the main, in the main room, was, which was a kitchen and living room combination, he had a microwave oven, full-size refrigerator, a nice banana bar with the bar stools. He had color-coordinated draperies and upholstery, which is, you look at it now, it's a little bit gaudy, but you know, that's not what you expect to see in a prison cell. He had the million dollar pieces of art hanging on the wall, candles on the tables. You go into the bedroom, a custom built bed bigger than any king size beds you've ever seen. Mm. His audio visual center didn't have, they didn't have cable TV and satellite TV and Netflix and things like that back then, but he did have all the latest releases of TV shows and movies from all around the world. He had uh, a fireplace in behind his desk in his office area. He had pictures hanging on the wall. One of the things, you know, if he's this devoted family man, when you when you came into the living room portion, he took his wanted poster and had that frame hanging on the wall, <laughs> not pictures of his family. And then when you get behind his desk, he took all of his mug shots and had those matted and framed in a collection because it's I can really see nice. him being like that. I can see he that. He had a collection of letters, folders, letters from people that would write him saying he was a great guy. There was one letter, and we talked about it. It was uh, from a lady who's offering her daughter Woo! to come to the prison and entertain Pablo Escobar. That ain't that sickening. To have his love child. Yeah, it, she but, was 13 years. He old. was saved. So Pablo was just, 24 when he first started dating his right, wife, and wife yeah. was 13. So that, right. that's. But it just goes back to what you're talking about about Pablo's persona. He kept all the letters that people would write to him. So was he a woman? Yeah. Oh, there's parties. You know, and we make a little joke. I mean, there was a lot of orgies at the at the prison. Now that in itself doesn't make him a bad guy, right? But, uh, that's, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke, guys. Yeah. But no, that, it comes from, from you because because <laughs> the way now let me say this though the way the way Narcos is is presented, you know, Javier, uh, it's a whole different ballgame with is. you. <laughs> you you look like you were a step away from being a porn star in Hollywood. I mean, that's how they presented you. I know. Let me I ask know. you: when you were watching some of those girls that played those roles, were you like, ah, oh, she looked like her? You know, she looked you know a little better than. Her. You know what I say? You know what? I wish that would be true. <laughs> hey, that, I wish that would hey, Can I play this role today? Even though Just it's a really joke with DA guys, a lot of times they like, I'm here. Man, now my wife thinks I'm sleeping with her in four of us because I bet. Of that. <laughs> so that's all Hollywood. That, well, you also that, would never yeah, marry. Nah, nah, I was single yeah, at the time. Nah, nah. I was single, but that's you know that's Hollywood. But that's kind of funny. So you were having a good time in Colombia. I was single, but I didn't date you know communists, informants. You know, I mean, it's, and and you know what it was. Hey, okay, listen, you I'll, made time. Exactly. Yeah, you made time <laughs> to have your extracurricular. Yeah. So this is this is my partner. I got to take up for him. He was not dating communists, yeah, yeah, hookers. Yeah. Or uh, informants, right. but what like I say, every, 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 other every, other every other woman in Colombia is fair game. So, would you ask the girl, "What is your political beliefs? Do you believe in capitalism or communism?" <laughs> I can't have sex with you if you believe in communism. Uh, so, okay. So, but so he was a woman. He was a party yeah, guy. Yeah, he was party. There was a lot of. Stuff. I remember a lot of negligees. Was he a big person. user himself? Was he a big user? Did marijuana. You like marijuana? marijuana. I didn't see anything about cocaine. Yeah, we never heard people who never, but you know, a lot of marijuana use. And then, how do you get the Colombian? 
soccer team to come play at the prison. The <laughs> national soccer team, we found photos. There's a famous goalie. A lot of people remember the guy with the dreadlocks, Rene Guita. The guy that kicked it from there, that's the guy that kicked no, it. That, that's another, that's a, the auto goal. That, that guy was killed later You're on. You're talking about the World Cup when Columbia scored against itself. Yeah, yeah he's talking about that guy. Um, that, 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 by the way, that, does that killing have anything tied to Pablo or no? Yes, yes. Uh, we, matter of fact, the, the guy. Who played that guy killed? The guy, it was a guy by the name of uh, Jesus Gallon, and we, a lot of documents, I think he was finally arrested. He worked for Pablo Escobar. This guy was one of the distributors. The death was all, ex not accidental, the death was just at a bar. One of the traffickers lost a lot of money because of you, and that, and that was it. It wasn't a planned hit. It wasn't premeditated. Yeah, it wasn't premeditated. They were at a bar because of your auto goal. Remember? But linked back to Pablo? Yeah, because this guy used to work for Pablo Escobar. So, so one of Pablo's people. In essence, yeah. yeah. Indirectly. Yeah, Got indirectly. It. Interesting. So now his compound where he lived, you know, this whole story about zoos, he built 20 yeah. lakes, some astronomical Finca, number Finca, of cars, that, 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 that is that insane. That, is that the really? famous Finca Napolis was his pride and joy, and we have a lot of photos, Steve talks about it, but that was his headquarters before he was on our radar. That's when they had the parties, people would fly in, we had a lot of, I remember talking to traffickers in the state spiders, they fly in, Meet with Pablo, you know, they'd uh, load up the airplanes. And, and that that was his love. He had a bullfighting ring there. He had a zoo, all the exotic animals. He had a playground with giant dinosaur statues for the kids. Uh, it it was, was just kind of phenomenal. Yeah. And remember, you got the money of the world. Yeah, no doubt. In all of those traffickers, what, what are they trying to do to other traffickers? They're trying to tell them, I have more than you do. And that's why, and they will display it, you know. So, it's like a competition between you. Constantly. Let me ask you, you know how sometimes you see names like this and you see Hollywood celebrities, people like that who want to party with some names like this. Was there any of that going on in Colombia where celebrities from U.S. were coming down to Colombia to party with them? Or that wasn't really the case with you guys when you were out there? I don't remember hearing about you as celebrities coming down, but it wasn't unusual for him to have like former Colombian beauty queens yeah. come out for parties yeah. and things like that. Beauty queens. Yeah, beauty for queens. Politicians, they're on the payroll. Politicians, a lot of politicians came into the ranch. We never saw celebrities. So let me ask you, going back to the power play with what happened with Gustavo, do you think that like pre-Gustavo, post-Gustavo getting killed, who was Pablo pre, who was Pablo post, meaning? Did he lose a lot of his confidence after Gustavo was gone? Gustavo Gaviria was surrounded. Come out with your hands up. He comes out with a machine gun. We wanted him alive because we wanted him in the United States because of all the, this guy had the connections all over the world, but he chose to come out uh, fighting. It was difficult for Pablo to get, but you know, he got organized, but one thing like, and he never, forgave for the killing of his cousin. Remember, they were brothers. They were more than brothers. They were always together. And Gustavo was, I think, more of the calm, the common sense type guy. Pablo, what's the famous line? You're spending too much money or you're making too yeah. much money? And he tells him just to launder more money. This is in Narcos. He tells him to launder more money. He said, you know, we can't. He said, isn't that what Al Capone did? Well, yeah, he said, that's what Al Capone did. And <laughs> Gustavo said, great line. Al Capone never had this much that money. money yeah. <laughs> that is a great line, you know. But it was that time. Gustavo was always the common, the, the grounding Pablo, Pablo, you know, calm down, calm down. And I remember stories where the other traffickers, the Ochoas, would say Pablo. And, you know, and the Ochoas, it's an interesting phenomenon. They were different. They were already rich. But they liked, you know, selling dope. But basically, don't kill you know, important people, you know, they would try to tell them this is going to cost us, you know, for them to come after us, and, and they were right. That's what cost them to come after Pablo Escobar. You know what, and you're talking about, you know, Pablo Escobar's ego, that power. I remember, and this is why this is a great example, we took one, of, during one of the raids, we took one of the cars, and it belonged to his sister. So we took the, sis the car, in the dashboard, and I have a copy of that note. It basically, there was a note that says, if you're thinking of stealing this car, do not. 
This is Pablo Escobar, and this car belongs to my sister. Avoid problems. <laughs> Ain't that great life insurance? Did it Pablo really have it on? Yeah, that? yeah, I saw it. It's it's written and signed by Pablo Escobar. Avoid problems. You know, that's the best insurance a car could ever have. And you see that name right there. People probably felt safer if they had him as a backing. So if you saw a name there, nobody wanted to mess with him. No, no. Nah, nah. So so the numbers I read about are the following numbers. Is it more or less than this? It's he killed the presidential candidate, that's one, Luis Carlo Colón. He kissed, killed the Minister of Justice, Laura Bonilla. He killed the Attorney General, okay. He killed, some numbers say, a thousand cops, some numbers say, three thousand cops. I think his son, Sebastian Marroquin, a.k.a. Juan Pablo Escobar, said, my dad in one week killed 500 cops. This is his son saying this, that in one week he killed 500 cops. And then thousands of people, and we were talking about earlier, where you hear the number and some say he killed 5,000 people, some killed 10,000 people, and then Popeye, who was his number one hitman, who's got a, by the way, he's got a YouTube channel, it's so strange, this guy's got a YouTube channel with six, 700,000 subscribers, and he claims that, that Pablo, he himself killed 300 people for Popeye that he was assigned to kill, but he said Pablo killed in a 50,000 people. So as vicious now as narco to, uh, series made it to here. us, was it even more this vicious than that? Like, I know you hear, you watch the show, nice and you sit there and say, this is not even close, or was it pretty close to it? Was it? On sale. Narcos did not get that right, right. and you uh, always said that Steve says that. Narcos and I did believe not get that right. It, 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 there was more saw. violence, there was more vicious, there Bang was more assassinations. Bus. You know, when uh, you talk about people, you just want to also the newspaper, Guillermo Cano. You can't go wrong, it's the research. He's the one who writes an all bad piece. Like Fellow the Columbia, over there. We need to bring back I don't really care. Escobar kills that it's got a gyro. I, I, I don't know. I care. Don't get me wrong. I'm using the motors anyway. Yeah, so the, the violence is shown in Narcos. Like um, and my sister, when, when she started watching it, she she didn't and, uh, watch it past the, nice the second quality ESC. Because of the uh, and a good quality camera, but it doesn't have a good thing. camera, actually. But as bad as Narcos portrays the violence in Colombia under Pablo Escobar's reign, it was a lot, uh, lot even worse if I can't use and that's, the, What do you mean by that? Uh, what, BSC, what do you say that? The frame Give us an $60 idea. $60 and worse. the motors are $60. I mean, it doesn't get any so worse than some of the stuff. And the if you go back, look at the car box. That, that's I where I always tell people, the, the car box. So, and you, and know, you know what? We had never heard the car box. I've never heard. You know, I mean, you see it, you know, you used to see it up there. Uh, in other parts the of the only world, way to but do it. then, you know, when you were putting them on, uh, on a daily basis, quality control issues, you know, 10, shipping 15 issues and, car yeah. bombs on a daily so basis, you, you don't know, want shopping to centers, that to me was yourself. an all-out, so I don't I'm care gonna this up here. who dies. This is my war my on Colombia, really, the rest of the world, He's on us too, on the United States. Under the table, under I'm the going to there. basically bring you down to your knees. And when you when you kill people, it wasn't just, you know, shoot him in the head and move on. He had him tortured. When he was going after somebody, especially a political so figure, he not only killed them, just like Laura Bonilla, he was going after the entire uh, the family. Proving. Very common. This was very common when it was happening. It, it, it was, was common. So here we go it's like everyday this. practice. Yeah. Was it every day you're seeing somebody every getting day. killed? Or every somebody's... day there was something you, and you would say, what else can he do? That, you know, your imagination, you could not even uh, fathom, you know, the, the famous Polonaise. commercial airline. Yeah. The kidnappings were, a lot of people were, were being Bye. kidnapped, and there's a famous lady by the name of Diana Chubari. Her dad used to be the president of Colombia. She was a journalist. He kidnapped a lot of journalists. That way they could write and say, Pablo Escobar's a good person. He's looking, you know, uh, please, Colombia, let him have whatever he wants. That, so, that's not the reporter, right? That's not the Valerie or... or no, uh, no, because no. that, by the way, that's a real character. Her name right. is Vir uh, Virginia, Virginia or, Vallejo, yeah. which looks like her twin. And she's dropped it gorgeous in real life based on some of the pictures you see. She looks like they're related. And so was, was she really having a relationship with Pablo? Yeah, she was one of his girlfriends. And remember, he liked press people so he could convince them no to write good about him. That's why he wanted all Not the much kidnap today. Uh, today, business people buy sure press companies so they can buy the things right. about them. So <laughs> not no, much has changed. Remote, so if Pablo, if Pablo didn't cross the line with that and he was in business, and his style of doing business wasn't to kill people except put competition out of business, how good would have Pablo done in business as a CEO? 
I just don't want to give a guy credit. I know you don't. I know you don't. So yeah, you, you tend to think that he probably would have done a good job in a legal business, but his business model is based on violence. You can't employ that in a legal business and be successful. So I don't know. I, I just don't want to give him credit and say, yes, he would have been successful. So I will say if I, if he was, he would have been the guy so litigious, he'd be suing everybody to find his way getting <laughs> yeah. to the top. I can no, see that possibly right. taking place. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So, uh, Bob, as you guys are going through, were there any um, stories related to presidents, you know, Bush, Reagan, Clinton? Was anything happening that maybe didn't, uh, wasn't covered in the series of Narcos? Was there anything outside of that? Yeah, uh, it was really, I remember uh, President Bush when he was the vice president. And when we started seeing the violence in Miami, remember all the violence and, mm -hmm. you know, Scarface, mm -hmm. remember the Scarface yep. movie? I mean, that was pretty accurate and loving. There a lot of, but anyway, a lot of, a lot of people were getting killed in South Florida. A lot of bodies, the famous Dateland mob massacre. Remember the one o'clock? We started seeing uh, Columbians killing Columbians in the middle of the day. It's like, what is going on in, in South Florida? bodies started coming up all over the place and it was Colombians and basically uh, I think under President Bush he was the vice president he says man hey we have a problem here in South Florida then they started looking at all the money that was being invested in Miami the, the famous buildings uh, the famous banks that were taking all the money and says we need to do something about it so he created a task force South Florida task force the South Florida task force which was the beginning and from there, it led on to, and, and then from there, the pressure was being put on Colombia to bring back extradition. That, I was about to ask about that extradition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's, that's how we, That's why he was so concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Extradition, bring it back, and then you see Colombia. You have certain people that are saying, "Wow, you know, we need so to bring back be extradition because we cannot oh, handle popular support." So no, what happened to those people? Good. Actual Pablo Escobar, Laura Bonilla, the newspaper oh. editor. So this is why this whole war from Pablo Escobar was based on extradition. So the one question that I think even till today is not fully answered. No one, n there isn't really anyone that has a hundred percent answer. This is what happened, right? Anybody? A lot of people say different stories, and we have to almost take their word for it. It's like faith. You know, you haven't seen God, but you believe there is a God, right? So. And, and based on what I've read, I see three different stories. One of the stories is that uh, Pablo was killed by the Colombian police, okay? Because that's who killed him. At the end, somebody put a bullet through his head because, you know, he was shot three times, one in the torso, one in the leg, and one through the ear that went through from one ear came out of the other ear, right? When you see the picture, you kind of see the autopsy, you see how that looks. Okay, so number one, Colombian police is who killed Pablo. And obviously, as a nation, you want that to be number one because Colombia needs that victory. The second scenario you hear about, he was killed by a Delta Force, you know, Navy SEAL, you know, team from the top. You know, I have friends from Delta Force and they know what they're doing. A sniper can be up there knowing exactly where he's at and take him out. And they're pretty sharp at what they do. So for somebody to get him straight through the head is not a difficult thing to do. But then that would be the victory of America if Americans killed him. Number three is what uh, 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 Sebastian Marroquin talks about when he says, I know my dad was committing suicide because my dad always told me, you know, if they come to you, no one's going to kill me. If you have a gun with 15 bullets, 14 are used to kill the enemy. One is used to kill yourself because no one should be able to kill yourself. Uh, no one should be able to kill you. And that's why he says, my dad called me seven times. That's the story. Call me once, I wouldn't pick up. Because I knew if I picked up, they're going to know where my dad's at. Second time, I didn't pick up. Third time, I didn't pick up. Fourth time, I didn't pick up. He said, I finally picked up on the seventh time. My dad dragged out the conversation with he and I. And that's when all of a sudden this thing happened. So I know for a fact my dad committed suicide. So it's not the Colombian victory. It's not the U.S. victory. So now, you've been asked this question a million times. You've spoken in front of YPO, EO government organizations here in the states outside of the states you've spoken to da well, well, agents you've spoken some, all over the world and you probably get this asked all the time and stuff on here. what's your version of the answer okay well then let's let's address the second one first whether it was a u.s special operator whether yeah, it was force or swift and six i know that it wasn't because when the operation went down as as the operation is taking place i'm standing in the room put this on pause turn on beta flight and plug in. I need to update my beta flight, but this B flight is such an old copter, I don't think it's going to matter. If it 
was 3.3 or better, I think it would matter. And of course, I don't have enough cables. Um, cables. I need one more USB cable so I can plug in this quad. Oh, damn it. Just one micro. Okay, we'll just have to snag one from over here and hope that it works. These cables are suspect, though. I don't think it's going to work, but we're going to try it. But we're having a problem with our thing over here. What did that fix it? All right. Hopefully, we can just plug this bad boy in. Where is the fucking other oh, thing? Plug this bad boy in. It's working, so we can just continue. Um, beta flight is frozen. Okay, now it's unfrozen. Now it's frozen. Now it's unfrozen. All right, so we have everything. It's showing up on the screen here. Let's see if I can get a better over-the-shoulder view here. Um, or maybe I should just point it up here at the projector. No, it's too dark. In there. We'll move it over here. So, I apologize. I, should, I did my best, but you probably won't be able to see this. Let me try doing it this way. Okay, that's a little better. Lighting this quadcopter, which is a B Fight 2 210. Uh, I, I, I went and set it up earlier and noticed that it needed to be run through beta flight, so I'm doing that now. And I'm turning on my Tyrannus because I want that to be on. I've already, I've already bound it. I don't know why it's beeping like that, but whatever. So, here we are in the config tab. Nothing needs to be changed. Here we are in the ports tab. It's on UART3 Serial RX with our XM Plus receiver. Our config tab, we are at DSHOT 600. 20% CPU, so I'm stuck at 8 and 2, it looks like, which is pretty bad. Um, I'm going to go for 8 and 4. Fuck that. Um, I'm hoping we'll be all right. All right. We'll reboot that. And we started up. Hey, Kitty, what's up, dude? No auto start, so we have to reconnect. And we're back on the beta flight shit here. Um, I get, wait, let me go back to config tab. D shot 600. There's no no uh, sensor alignment. It's straightforward. Apparently, we're at eight and four. Twenty-five percent CPU load. Now that's a little too high. I hope that's not going to cause a problem. Maybe I should just go back to eight and two. Because I mean, heaven, that's just too high. So. Put it back to 8 and 2. And this time it automatically restarted for whatever reason. So we're at 8 and 2 now, and we're back to 20% CPU load, which is high still. But, um, yeah, we're going to stick with this. 8 and 2. RSSI is disabled. <clears throat> I'm not going to put permanent air mode on. Let's see, where's motor stop? <clears throat> motor stop is on. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And uh, make any other adjustments. 
Well, turning motor stop off is kind of tantamount to uh, turning air mode on permanently. Um, let me think here. I like it to be stopped when it's not in acro mode. I like motor stop to be on. I don't know how to what I'm trying to achieve here, but I'm going to leave it on and just leave it on a switch to have to turn it on. But yeah. Yeah, so that's not going to affect acro mode. That's all I'm worried about. So motor stop is still on. We don't need to change anything. Um, everything looks fine here. Failsafe is drop. PID tuning. Standard PIDs looks typical as to everything else I've seen. Oh, let's change this because I hate to see that. That's always odd looking. They are all wrong though. Spectrum is the right one, so we'll do that. And just test it out. Throttle, yaw, pitch, roll, beeper, modes. I'm not getting a second confirmation. Oh, no eyes. So everything is on here. Um, now let's move on to the next thing, and I don't know why this thing keeps stopping its charge. Maybe it's done charging. Uh, yeah, there's no RSSI on here. Let's check the rates. They look pretty typical. Modes. <laughs> Arm is on AUX 1, not AUX 3. We can shorten this up a bit if we can. Oh, uh, whatever. It's, it'll work fine that way. Uh, AUX 2, so an angle. We'll put on Horizon. That's on AUX 2. Same next up after uh, the first one. Okay. And then Anti-Gravity is AUX 2. But it's all the way towards the end here. Make sure they don't coincide with each other. Head free and head edge, I don't know what the fuck that is. Beeper is on aux 3, all the way over. Lead load, I don't know what that is. Air mode is on aux 2, all the way over in the corner. Anti gravity and air mode is what we have. We do have flip over after crash, so maybe I want to go ahead and add that turtle mode. Uh, to be honest, I've had no real need for it. Let's save this. Alright. And we'll check the uh, OSD tab here. There's no RSSI apparently. We want the voltage, no artificial horizon or any of that bullshit. The timers, the mode, the name's fine. That's good enough. Um, let's save that. Save it again, I'm not sure if it worked. Yes, okay. Not, there is no LED strip. I should add one, because this is a fat ass on the back with nothing, nothing covered. You know what I mean? It seems like a, a big empty space back there. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it on. Everything seems to be working. Um, I want to go over everything one more time just to be sure. Everything looks spot on from, from the overview I've seen so far. And I'm expecting a trouble-free trouble free flight. And I'm probably going to go ahead and get another B fight and use this as my practice copter instead of the Real Act Real 5, which is a 50-50% failure rate. Or 50-50, whatever. I have bought two, and one of them has been shit out of the box of the Real Act Real 5. Don't buy that thing. I won't buy any more of them. I'm trying to salvage what I got in Frankenstein up a uh, one to fly now while I'm waiting on some parts for my 6S. That King Kong is okay, but it's hard to control. It's it's so light, it's at the point where it's like, 
you know, it's so influenced by the battery, all this pendulum shit going on. I hope there's not something wrong with the, uh, I mean, maybe I should calibrate the accelerometer. I hate doing this. Alright, I'm just going to assume this thing is charged and stop plugging it back in here. Alright, this goes with my goggles. Put that over there. Let's finish. Finish what we were doing. And we want the stick low threshold to be low, not 1100. We want it to be closer. We want it to be 1000. Stick center is 1500, and stick high is 2000. Save that. still be getting that weirdness. Probably because it's sitting on a laptop. Yep, we're still getting that weirdness. That's even weirder. Anyway, everything looks good. I'm going to disconnect and unplug and do my first um, test of the video system of this thing. Um, swapping batteries here. And then I'll be able to test the goggles. Oh no, let me just use my goggles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to decide which set of goggles to use. I've got a fresh battery here. I'll just throw it back on the charger after I'm done using it for this purpose here. Um, beta flight, I don't think. Do I need to use this again for another copter? I got a Hawk 5 over there I could set up, but I'll do that later. I think I'm only going to launch one quad today. Uh, let me check. Make sure everything's good over here. Alright. Alright. So I'm going to test out the video system of this newly christened B fight. I'm going to move the uh, iPad over onto the stand over here. I'm going to adjust the angle of it, hopefully without knocking it off the stand here. How you doing over there, Mr. Cat? to my uh, position, so. Um, yeah, good enough. So now I am, uh, I've, I've done the rest of this B-Fight quad. I need to add some things, some finishing touches. I need to put cable ties, I mean zip ties around the arms to secure the uh, motor wires. I need to secure this uh, battery lead to the uh, standoff here or the one of the arms, one or the other. This is perfect for a standoff. I need to find some props for this bitch. And before I put the props on in the house, I'm going I'm to see if everything's good here. Decide what kind of strap I'm going to use. Let's see, is there a B-fight strap? There, oh my god. There is a B-fight strap and it's cheap as dirt. Not even, oh my god. Why would they even, why would they even put shit like this in here? So this is what they put in here with the quad. This is the battery strap that they, that they expect me to use. I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, we got clear heat shrink. 
I will use. Well, no, that's so whack. They give me the wrong shit. One piece of clear heat shrink. And I've got an XM Plus. I need two. So I'll use my own things. <laughs> my own battery strap and heat shrink and antenna solution. In the meantime, I'll unplug because this is going to take a while. So, Mr. Fight, we're going to set you up with a nice new battery strap. Um, hopefully one better quality than the first ones that just dropped in my hands here. Kind of, I want one of these Apex ones, but thicker. The real, uh, real act will probably be, that's fine. Since I'm done with real act, because they're shitty quads, I'm thinking I'll use their, uh, oh man, there's not even a good battery strap situation here. This is, I don't like this. Yeah, so this is staking, stealing one of my battery straps, one of my high quality battery straps for my three inches. So now I gotta buy more of those. Cause damn it, three inches deserve love too. They need, they need battery love too. There's no way to put this thing through. That is so fucking lame. Don't you love it when they give you no place to insert the battery strap? Except right damagingly close under the ESCs. That's a huge, huge, huge oversight. Huge. I've had it so bad that I just wrapped the whole goddamn quad in the battery strap. That's ridiculous. We've been doing this shit for years now, guys. This type of shit is like, to me, intentional. So now I have to force this through and hopefully I don't break any of my ESC's uh, solder connections. But that's bound to happen when you crash and you have your battery wires wrapped up in your ESC wires like this. And, you know, part of the thing here is, is backwards. That's, that's not good. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make this work without breaking anything. You know, like I'm already putting mad pressure on the damn ESC. Stick something in here to hold it down, hopefully. Man. It's so easy to avoid shit like this. But no, they didn't avoid it here. They gave us that retarded battery strap for a good reason. Because really there's no other alternative. You gotta use a cheap and shitty that's thin. I think that's a horrible choice. But now with the uh, the reality that we can get good quality adhesive strap helpers, it's not as severe of a thing. But yeah, that's that's a huge disappointment for me. Uh, I've been dealing with battery strap issues all week, and then you get a brand new one and see that it's got this same fucking issue. It's just more headache, that's all. You want some headache with your fun? Or some fun with your headache? <laughs> Come on over to B-Fight. We got plenty of fun for your headache. You might not even notice the headache. 
But yeah, this is an overly long battery strap and horrible solution. Horrible way to, to secure your battery. So I will definitely be using the adhesives every time I fly this big one. It's a shame. Usually that's better for small quads. Uh, when they get up to this size, the physics is, it kind of can overcome anything you can really do, so that's a serious problem that I don't have any real <laughs> robust battery strapage here. It's just a weak, a weak battery strap, so I have to use the adhesive to hold it in there or it's just going to fall out every time. Alright. So, B fight test number one. Let's go ahead and plug it in. I'm kind of drunk, so. Okay, so the beeper's working normal. motor stop is on when you're in not in acro mode horizon mode then you go to acro mode and then mode and it's air mode and anti-gravity so, i like that anti-gravity air mode shit man it's very helpful all right so we got that done now we got to pick out a set of props for this thing Bruh. Highly disappointed in this thing, battery strap. Um, well, no, we don't need to set up props yet. We need to put our zip ties on and all that shit. Alright. So, zip ties go around the arms because you want to keep your uh, shit secure in a crash. And I want to check my bolts because sometimes these bolts are not tight and the arms are loose and, and you'll have a bad flight if that's the case. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is zip tie this battery lead to one of these standoffs here. I'm thinking I want to make sure it's not going to be an issue with the prop. So it's probably going to be best to just go ahead and go under the arm and use a larger zip tie. It's amazing how much, uh, how much stuff, products I go through. <laughs> it really is. But I guess crashing does, you know, does cause that. All right, so I'm gonna just go straight to this rear arm here, I think, and deal with it that way, so we're kind of making this an all-in-one type deal, instead of using two zip ties on this arm, we're just using one because, you know, um, you got the du double duty here providing strain relief to the uh, battery lead and also providing strain relief to the uh, motor wire so that it doesn't get moved around in a crash. And we've achieved both of those. You basically just need to go down like that to plug it into the battery. So hopefully I haven't uh, made it too tight. snippers snippy snips out here and uh, there's one and you want to leave a little bit of slack there that's the whole point of the thing here. so now we're going to just do the rest of these guys hopefully with these smaller ones if they'll fit looks like we will uh, I'm not hopefully I have enough left Good. Uh, I, might, I might have run out. No, there's a second. So 
No, we need one more. I just gotta find one more. That'll be good. And we can move on to the next step, which is doing the antennas. Snip. Nice and tight. Just need one more here. And of course, I don't see one. Of course. What? What? No. See a big one. Well, let's look in the little pack over there. I'm sure I've got one in my drawer behind me. The magic drawer. And inside the magic drawer, there is a magic pouch. <laughs> the magic pouch. There it is. tested is the video system so we gotta get to that too. Alright, snip snip. Now you got all of our motor wires locked down. The solders look really good, the solder joints look really good. And that's why they gave us that chintzy strap because there's really no provision made for securing this shit like you know it's just nothing for a battery strap it's almost like not even an afterthought anyway so now i'm at the stage where i'm going to try to secure the receiver which is already just it's tight in there so i don't have a lot of options i want to do the the antennas in a cool way that's going to be helpful to my lack of fail safe but I don't see any real good good way to do that unfortunately um it's like uh shit it's crammed in there right under the DTX so if I really wanted to finagle it I could unplug it and pull it out and totally reposition it but I have a feeling that would be a mistake You know, I, I, the only other, I see another good place, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with what I got and try to just have one antenna going up and one antenna going straight out. Which I'm not sure if that's... Let me see. I mean... It's 90 degrees at the end of the day. That's the whole point is of making them 90 degrees apart. It doesn't really matter so much how, where. As long as they're 90 degrees apart and, it, you know, not something really stupid like under the carbon or something, you should be fine. So now I'm going to move on to this part. I'm going to need two of these zip ties and some heat shrink. And I'm just going to keep it simple. Wow, I'm just noticing they've kind of made provisions where you could almost make this a top mount battery quad if you wanted to, but man, you would have to take the, the top plate off and do a little rearranging, or at least a little house cleaning with the wires. Anyways, I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to need to use smaller zip ties. Looks like those are going to be too thick. So I'm going to need to go with this size here. And I'm thinking we'll just do one on, the, on this and one on the other. If there's any other way, I mean, there's just not enough length to do it any other way, really. You know, by the time you move it to another side, you'd only have an inch 
And, you know, at that point, have you really, are you gaining anything? I don't know. This is gonna have to go in the other way. This. Side where how far you want forward or whatever. I'm gonna go for all the way forward. Hopefully. Yeah, I don't think we. Yeah, no, it's, it's not gonna work. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah, it works, it works. It's just a matter of, it's not that tight of a fit. So this one would be going straight up like this. And you need to maintain some, some slack. So it will be shorter than the zip tie, which is good. You need a little more slack. And the other one's going to have to point straight out at the side, which is it's not ideal to say the least. Or you could do 90 degree V straight up. Or you could do the normal 90 degree V, you know, just right here. Yeah, that's, that's what you do. That's what you do. Sometimes you got to get some coffee in you before you start doing this shit, man. Alright, so I'm going to put this one on the other side here. It needs to point this way. So you got to make sure you get that right. It's got to come in this angle. There you go. And come out back towards you. But at that 90 degree angle, It's pretty close, and it's hard to guesstimate 90 degrees, so it's better to have some real point of reference here. We can certainly nail 90 degrees here, you know what I mean? That looks like 90 degrees to me. So the first batch of light bulbs is charged. I'm going to plug it here. Up, they have these. on the bench here. Alright, so now we're heat shrinking. That's going to be about there. Like that. Okay. So, with this size, we're going to need to use 
hopefully we can use black. Yeah, I think we can use black. And we'll try to use no more than three per side. Probably less. I like using this short heat shrink because I don't really care so much about how it looks as long as it works. I mean, I care how it looks. Don't get me wrong. Put this in here. This side. Bring that down. Make sure you leave enough slack. Looks like we have enough slack. So now we need a heat source. Lighter. to trim it at this stage so I'm not accidentally trimming my antennas. <laughs> we grab that, make sure we know the length, and snip there. Wow. You don't want it to be any shorter than the antenna, but you don't want, need it to be any longer either. Alright. Now, put the tops on these. slide them to length. Yeah, that's even better. You still got a little bit of wiggle room, but that's about perfect 90 degrees there. But you should be able to make it perfect uh, just by tugging here and there a little bit. All right. So, looks good. Looks very good. And if you can, if, I like to have the video antenna at a different angle than the other ones. I don't like to have them any time at the same angle. Uh, but anyway. So it looks like that's everything I need to do to get this thing in the air. Uh, final test will be to test the video system out so we can pop off this uh, video gog I mean, God. Pop off the uh, camera lens. collection or lens cap collection oh shit I need to plug in my uh, iPad glad I saw that uh, let's see. iPad juice is that iPad juice no this is iPad juice right here alright quickly now about to die 
iPad is about to die. No um, props in this. So. Video goggles, battery, Tyrannus. Alright, we got power there. We got Tyrannus there. So on R8 we have it, and it looks really good. Let's check everything out here. I trust it. I trust it. We do need to put on the uh, antennas. I mean, put on the props and test it out for real. I'm I'm gonna test it out right here with this battery. Uh, let's see. I forgot what kind of props are suggested on this guy, but it's a typical quad. It's uh, 25, 2205 with a 2300 kV motor, so it's nothing new. Uh, these bad boys with the 2600 KV2206s are definitely something new. Uh, and I've been crashing them left and right. About to rebuild one of these and take two and make it one. Because uh, I'm not waiting around for the parts. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I'm still waiting around for parts for the 6S build here. And I have no choice because I don't have any, any other parts. Props. Uh, where's the... This is the box that came in, and I'm going to go ahead and toss this. I usually use this when I make uh, a mail shipping something like that, so I'm going to use some of that packing material to keep the shipment safe. Uh, so there's no, uh, no, no props in the box here. I probably took them out. And this is our bag of magical... Magical bag of five inch props here. And bring this back down here where it was. That works. Um, so, yeah, I've got my bag of five inch props here. Or several, several bags of five inch props. And I don't remember which is which. But I do see one set of pretty blue props that don't look too offensive. I think I might go for those instead of these uh, King Kongs. Nothing wrong with the King Kongs. But they're a little sedate. Uh, these are 5048s. That's sedate enough. Uh, I'm pretty sure this could run 5152s. But on the first date, I'm not going to pull it out like that, you know what I mean? That is moving on. This battery is good. And so this goes in here. And uh, we got our props. And then take this battery from your goggles. Because that was just a test. Well, actually, I'm going to use this to test outside with the props on, too. So, we'll do that. Models, Tyrannus, and now we need where to put the little blue props. So, 
Total Blue Prop. So we'll go ahead and fight that like an animal. I don't remember which props came recommended with this thing. But, you know, like I said, these these are pretty generic race, racer, racer stars, I think. So, we'll go with these. I hate the fact that the motors are clockwise and all that bullshit with the threads on top. I fucking hate that shit. But it's lefty-tighty today. Charge my timepiece. Where's my fucking. Oh shit. Don't have time for that. I'll, I don't know where the charger is for my timepiece, so I'll have to look for that later. Now, this is the normal one here, so let's put this one on normal. Spin her around. Do her from the back here. All right. And I think that looks good. That antenna setup looks good. It's not the best for crashes, but this flat top is not the best for crashes. And I probably will regret this when it comes time to put on an HD camera because I've left myself very little options here. Um, it's going to have to be the small one offset to the left right up in the front, possibly visible in the uh, FPV footage. Um, tool chest, tool chest, toolbox, and we need to keep the flow of batteries going. Uh, I've got all my mini batteries charged except for the one that I'm using on the goggles right now. Let's get this done. Alright, that feels good. Even though I don't have my uh, normal sticky fingers assistant. Uh, this thing feels real smooth for some reason. Like I don't need to uh, sweat it. I think I've got them locked down enough. So these are reverse props here, or reverse locking nuts. So it's lefty tidy instead of righty tidy, like we've all been told we were lied to, obviously. I feel like I might have to come back and yeah, I have to come back and tighten these up one more time. Because you definitely don't want to lose a prop mid-flight. That has happened to me all too often in the last couple of months. And I think I'll use this little dirty trick. Ah, ouch. Kind of just grab the prop if it's a tri-blade. It cuts your it cuts your skin, but it makes <laughs> it tightens the prop nuts. So. Yeah, I still don't think that's quite tight enough. I need about a quarter turn on these opposite ones. Turning righty, lefty, tighty. Toolbox! Oh no, not toolbox, just grab one. Uh-huh. So, uh, okay, let's go. 
Yeah. It's not in there. I, 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 I surrender. I'll go over here and get it. Ta da. Let's get a big red there. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, but I can't get that to go any tighter. I hope it's good enough. Okay. Yeah, I hope it's tight enough. So. Test it out. Time is here. B byte 2D. 2D. I'm going to do this right away here and just plug the watch in and tap. It's not charging. Fuck it. All right. So, let me turn that on. We have video. I hope we have. Oh no. Be safe. Don't be stupid. Go ahead and use the adhesive on this. Cause. Um, these battery straps are the worst, and I mean they are the worst. So to fly without an adhesive would be negligent, really. Stupidligent. Stupidligent. I'm running out, and the ones I'm using from 3M are good, but under certain conditions, they fail. Uh, too much humidity, they fail. Sweat from your hands, they fail. But they're not gooey like some other ones out there, so there's some advantages and some disadvantages. But either way, I'm running out, as you can see. And this is something that would actually keep me grounded, because I hope I'm mature enough and not that stupid to continue trying to fly when you don't have the proper uh, battery restraints and you've already flown enough to know that you'll crash and not a fun crash a miserable like spinny weird crash because the battery has come undone and it's hanging by a thread you know those are not the cool crashes the spinny weird ones like what the fuck am I looking at here is what the the no, the novice or the 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 customer or the what do you call those people the, the person watching what do you call those guys? spectators yeah I don't think the spectators are gonna like that at all nor flips to death it just looks like bullshit like almost like we plan to do some silliness. There is a possibility to use this positively, but yeah, okay. B fight, take one. I'm going to test her out. Wanna come? Please come in the graphics. soon because I got the low battery alert like five minutes ago so it's no telling. Man this is a pretty copter isn't it? Very pretty copter. Like the blue crops. And that's uh from 
my homeboy. Very smooth copper, super smooth. That's like milk and magnesia smooth, man. Unbelievable. I didn't know it was could possibly be so good. And this is 3S. I don't even like 3S, man. I'll be using 3S on this motherfucker though. Wow. I'm sharp. I'm literally sharp. Like the tiny shark. It's pretty white, but man, wow. This is the smoothest quadcopter I've maybe ever flown in my stinking life. And my life has been a stinking life. I've been flying a lot of these things, man. Wow. It's shocking. I fly inferior when you can fly something that's dice. This is really dice. <laughs> 